So today we are going to study a topic on environmental economics and this topic is related to environmental Kuznets curve but we will start from a background and then build the topic on it. Okay and I will try to speak slowly so that you can understand and and I will also uh, take questions from the chat. So if you have any questions do raise hand or write in the chat box and I will try to answer while I am presenting. So first of all we start with macroeconomic goals. So whenever we study any topic in economics we start with that that topic it can be environment or it can be energy it can be a crime rate we focus on how it is related to human well-being if that topic is related to human well-being it means uh, we need to study why or what are the issues related to that topic so but the traditional macroeconomics has often narrow focus on stability and growth um, so traditionally when we study macroeconomics it focus on um, that well-being comes from stability and growth of GDP it only comes from there but there are no other reasons changes in the condition of work stress uh, stress imposed on families and development of social and financial infrastructure of an economy are often ignored and it means these are some some other aspects of um, economy that usually uh, macroeconomics macroeconomies uh, often don't don't focus on because they are focusing on that higher GDP means higher well-being so some topics that uh, macroeconomics uh, often ignore are environmental degradation in, income inequality or healthcare infrastructure so that's why there are separate subjects for these courses economic and, and we in macroeconomics we already studied that economic growth is not sufficient uh, to improve well-being because it doesn't measure layer uh, and it, it it does not uh, account for the time utilized by the labor and so far so so on so there, there are many other factors okay uh, uh, so fine uh, finite planetary limits might make un unlimited GDP growth unfeasible so in macroeconomics we knew that increase in GDP will lead to well-being okay but problem is that since we have finite resources or scarce resources we cannot create unlimited GDP so that we can have unlimited well-being so this is the problem that macroeconomics had to address so that's why we are studying environmental economics to try to find a solution major environmental issues in, in uh, and global pollution so they, uh, we have noticed that there is a there is a huge increase in world population in 1960 there was only 3 billion people and and, and in and in and in 2011 there are 7 billion people okay so world population has is increasing so there is a increased demand or uh, demand for goods or uh, or resources resources include jobs raw materials uh, agriculture goods uh, land Human population cont growth contributes in many environmental pressures. It leads to pressure on food production. It leads to land degradation. It means that we are shifting uh, agri land to, to, to urbanized land or residential land. Okay. So there's a there's an increased use of uh, fertilizers and pesticides why we need to focus on agri productivity so agri productivity and we try to use fertilizer or pesticides so that uh, with the decreased uh, agricultural land available and it is decreasing because there's an increase in population we also need increased food production so uh, we are using the medicines or fertilizers or pesticides to try to increase the production and then 
uh, uh, overusing water supply so we, we there is a pressure on available water next is uh, major environmental issues also include resource depletion so world fisheries are declining because there is overfishing people think that this is an unlimited source and then uh, there is no regulation on it so they do overfishing tropical forests are depleting very fast so they are using wood or any other sources from there a billion people live in countries where this water is scarce means uh, they, they are living in a place where water is not clean enough for them to survive further we can also notice that there is a uh, um, mineral resources like coal gas and and uh, fuel like uh, petrol or or other types uh, are depleting because we are overusing it global production of oil is at peak within few decade uh, within the few decades so uh, we are max we have maximized the production capacity we cannot produce for the more current dependence on fossil fuels could challenge potential uh, uh, challenge potential for industrial countries to maintain their living standards why because when they are increasing fossil fuels they are also increasing co2 so it is very difficult for them to maintain standard of living okay and 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 for, for developing countries to reduce poverty so if they are increasing fossil fuels they think that they will increase gdp so that they can remove the poverty but on the other hand it is also depleting the health because of increase in carbon emissions so what is happening that uh if if we are dependent on uh, carbon emissions we will not be able to uh, if we are if we are dependent on fossil fuels we will not be able to uh, what we call get the uh, get the target uh, standard of living because uh, on one hand we are increasing our income but on other hand we are depleting our health so ma major environmental issues also include pollution and waste so industrial countries in a major share of pollution that includes uh, two third so industrialized countries are producing so fast and they are also producing pollution toxic waste are exported from industries to low income countries so what the rich countries are trying to do they are shifting their dirty industries to to low income countries uh, uh and showing it as fdi but on the other hand uh, they are actually exporting the pollution that is related to that production so um the poor countries are looking at the investment that they are getting and the jobs that they will be getting but they are not looking at the co2 that will be produced so the what is happening is that uh, uh, most of the pollution is now shifting from the rich countries to poor countries and it is also known in literature as pollution heaven hypothesis Question have one hypothesis is that um, the the rich countries are exporting pollution and the poor countries because they are they they want investment so they are accepting um, dirty industries just for the case sake that they are able to feed their nation. Okay, so next is major environmental issues like the race between technology and resource depletion. Economic economic growth is associated with productivity gains. So, if there is productivity increase, uh, there will be growth. Uh, from being able to produce goods and services progressively uh, with progressively cheaper resources. So, we are trying to make resources cheap so that we can increase the productivity, which will lead to growth. When the wood and whale oil becomes scarce, uh, they were replaced by fossil fuels. So, people used to use wood and whale oil to to burn. Uh, and the, when since they become scarce they started oil fossil fuels or like coal technological optimists believe that human will always be able to come up with a technical solution with resource scarcity so they are saying that if, if, if the resources that we are using like fossil fuels if it if, if it becomes scarce 
the we will find we will be able to find a technology that can uh, solve this problem like renewable energy or energy efficiency so but the question is do we have substitutes available for all our resources all types of resources some resources are more essential than others so uh, like there is no substitute for potable water means the water that you are getting from rivers canals or or see land below the land water so if if they are they are not there then you have to move it yourself then it will become non potable and it will be very expensive okay so this is saying that technology people with technology thinks that we will find the solution but the, the resource depletion is going so fast that we there is a scare that some of the resources will be finished so even renewables might be extinguishable so some of the renewable energy is also scarce like fish are renewable or reproducible resource we we don't know because it it is it is a reproducible source or renewable and and uh, so we know that if even though it is renewable but it is not inexhaustible means uh, even though fish can regenerate and grow but it is not that it will never end if we overuse them it will end so many deep sea fish are seriously depleted so their 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 population is so small so that their growth rate is now also small so they are depleting so technology change has contributed to decline like we have used larger boats to to catch the fish we use the bigger nets to catch the fish we use sonar technology to find the fish so it means we are we d- demand for fish is so high that it has reduced the uh, growth of fish because if the number of fish are uh, lower then their their reproduction will be lower so there will be low growth so this is the background that we discussed uh, for the environmental questionnaire curve okay now we are going towards uh, the current issue of climate change and this topic we will start with uh greenhouse emissions and global temperature change so linking the uh, pollution with temperature change so emissions of various greenhouse gases trap uh, heat near the earth surface leading to uh, many issues so whenever we pollute uh, it it traps in the our environment it it it, it the, does not allow the heat to go back out of the earth so it traps the earth uh, uh, traps the heat in the earth because of that there is increase in uh, general war- global warming there is a rising sea level because of melting melting of ice it is causing ecological disruption because of change in temperature so some of the animals or plants or trees or crops are sensitive to temperature so they, it is disturbing increase in severe weather events like hurricanes floods and droughts they are because of the overheating so this is the chart of showing how temperature has changed from 1900 to to 2000 uh, 2100 so it is showing that there are two types of projection methods are used so this is change in temperature so it is showing that at a, at a low projection the more conservative way of explaining the change in temperature it will increase the temperature by uh by around 2 degrees and the high projection is saying that it will somewhere increase by 7 degrees so so by by 20 2100 like by by 76 years earth will experience a uh, increase in temperature between this much degrees and this is too much on average uh, this much increase is very high so what is the cost of this increase in temperature so cost of climate change in 20 uh, 21st century is between this much so in because of increase in temperature uh, there is increase in cost of uh, energy required to cool down the process uh, there is energy required in the housing like ac and refrigeration so it is it has increased the cost so that is about 5 to 20% of gdp most severe effects of climate change would be avoided at uh, avoided at the cost of 1% of gdp so it, it means if we invest this much uh today we can avoid the severe effects like we can learn how to uh, adopt and how to make our systems in a way that they are not sensitive to high temperatures 
Most dangerous impacts of climate change are not likely to occur for several decades or more. The actions taken in next few decades will most most surely will profound effect on on those ultimate events. Uh, so what is saying that if a, the the we, we they are saying that the extreme events are not happened yet. And, and and if we take some actions, we'll we'll try. We can stop it. Climate change is likely to exacerbate ex global inequalities and impede economic development in poor in poor nations because they don't have resources or infrastructure to to cater to high temperatures. So what happens? Like country like Pakistan, in one year there is a drought, and other year there is a flood. So both extreme opposite events occur uh, in a year. So this is showing that we don't have a management system as a poor country to, to cater to find a way that we balance a drought and a flood and stay in, the, in between. National and global responses to climate change. Modern environmental problems require coordinated international response. So there's a need of international organizations to work together. Kyoto Protocol was developed and it, it in that protocol, it committed industrialized countries to, to 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 reduce their greenhouse emissions by an average of five percent uh, below their 90, 1990 emissions. So they they were the Kyoto Protocol tried to commit industrial countries to reduce the emissions five percent below what they were polluting in 1990, so that it will it will be reduced. It will tend to reduce the pollution. Then there is another agreement, Paris Agreement. Each country is supposed to set down own goal for reduction of greenhouse gas. Treaty does not include any mechanism for actually to actually enforce the commitments. So, so these are two international uh, events, the event, uh, two international agreements that try to force the countries to reduce the pollution. Cost of responding versus cost of inaction. So it is saying that cost of responding means if we do something now or, or cost of what if we don't do anything now. So large scale energy transition away from fossil fuels have significant costs. So if we uh, shift from fossil fuel to renewable energy, it will it, it has a cost. So we have to develop the infrastructure. But but if we compare at macroeconomic level, this cost is very low. Should the cost be balanced against growing costs that are likely to be caused because of climate change? So it is saying that uh, the cost of transition versus cost of climate change. So if the we if we compare them, then technically these cost of transition will be very low. So what will happen is. Uh, that if we don't transit, what will happen? There will be damage from extreme events. Floods will damage our crops, our housing, our road infrastructure. The heat will affect our crops, our production systems. There will be a loss in GDP agricultural production because of high heat. Possible effect of famine, uh, which, which is the uh, fall in productivity and output, conflict between the regions and migration of people from their agricultural area to residential area for jobs. So these are the major costs that we, we have to bear if we don't take any action now. Okay, so now we talk about Sustainability and environmental Kuzner's curve. So we are building towards the idea of environmental Kuzner's curve. So key issues is that uh, sustainable development requires a strong economic uh, perspectives. Uh, there was an idea that we should focus on zero growth so that there is no growth and there will be no pollution. There is a trade-off between renewable and non-renewable energy. So they focus on these issues. So environmental efficiency of economic system. So critical role of innovation is the required that can help uh, to, to, to sustain the economic growth and that we already discussed in economic growth models like solo growth model. So this says that if we keep on innovating, we invest on R&D, we will be able to sustain higher growth. Sustainability and sustained growth entangled issues, trade-off but complementaries through role of innovation. 
so it is saying that uh, the growth and sustainability are interconnected so if we are trying to increase gdp it will also increase co2 so how to find a balance so that we increase the gdp but do not increase co2 for that there is a there is an important role of innovation what is sustainable development so sustainable development which is called sd here so is an achievement of uh, is the achievement of sustained path of economic growth which do not, uh, do not undermine future generation possible consumption so it is saying that if we increase gdp today it is not hurting future gdp okay so we define future generation what is what is meant by future generation an orthodox uh, an orthodox economist would claim that it depends on our time preference or discounting rate so uh, he is saying that uh if the discount rate the 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 our our uh, preference to protect future generation or uh, our future depend on what is the discount rate if the discount rate is very high uh a higher discount rate uh depending upon consumption and opportunity cost the less future the benefits or cost are valued it means if we have very high discount rate we will prefer present over future okay so it means so in order to develop sustainability we need uh, as an orthodox orthodox economist we need to find ways to reduce the discount rate and um so our discount rate depends upon the preferences of the person and and his consumption growth okay so so this this is the important thing here next slide we talk about that we already know that gnp is gross national product is consumption plus income and net net national product is gnp minus depreciation of capital and and uh, and, and capital stock dynamics depend on accumulation and depreciation so how capital increases or decreases so this is the background formula so sd is linked with total capital or natural capital so it is talking about social development relation with the capital available so total capital in the economy depends upon man made capital like roads buildings human capital like skill labor natural capital like fuel oil gas coal wood clean air clean water okay so each capital stock is defined by its growth rate and its depreciation rate so each has its own growth rate and its own depreciation rate so if i is the depreciation rate then capital uh, if if the growth is equal to depreciation i means growth and 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 depreciation is the rate at which it is falling then it means that capital is steady it means it is not increasing or decreasing okay so this is output and output is equal to total capital uh, in the economy okay thus the first intuitive golden rule of social development is that total capital should be at least constant and invest investment should match the depreciation that we already studied in solo growth model okay so it means that there is a depreciation rate of capital and our investment should be at least equal so that <coughs> the capital should not fall but if we need to make sure that we are saving something then our investment should be more than depreciation then we will technically grow next is this may imply decreasing natural capital stock uh, this may, uh, and substitute it in other form so it, it is saying that if even if we have investment equal to capital stock but we need to make sure that for each capital stock its depreciation must be equal to investment otherwise what will happen is that the natural capital will be substituted with other forms means we will use more of natural capital and 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 it will depreciate but overall overall i will be equal to k but but for the case of natural capital i of natural capital will not be equal to or or less than depreciation rate of natural capital so what will happen is that we will see a fall in natural capital and 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 it will become very difficult to sustain so this uh, this is the western country history that uh, uh, for example uh, arab countries management of non renewable resources uk's oil exploitation 
in any case rents from natural source should you should be reinvested so what is talking about that we need to make sure that uh, the investment that we have should be equal to the depreciation rate of that capital and individually for each capital the investment should be equal to their depreciation rates next is thus weak substitutability substitutability may also imply complete exhaustion of natural resources it means uh, if people consider that they are substitutable they will they will overuse the natural resource strong substitutability is instead stressing the capital uh, critical role of some natural capital forms and irreversible losses will happen so the general saving rules is applied to specific environmental assets like uh, like forestry and fishes where where we can we can improve that otherwise what will happen is that some of the resources cannot be uh, increased okay so social development is also possible in the case of reduced amount of capital is inherited by future generation but capital must be more productive more efficient so it means uh, even if we are reducing the capital but we can achieve the development in the future but it's only possible if we increase the productivity okay so that is linked with the innovation that we discussed earlier okay so what are the key forces of innovation how we can promote the innovation that is prices the seller knows that if we don't do investment in innovation our product prices will go down and then government policy that motivates the companies to do investment form strategies to become competitive so that they do investment and and weak version of uh, this uh, uh, porter hypothesis that uh, that the long run policies cost are lower uh, than induced innovation gains so so it means he's saying that uh, if we know that the innovation gains are higher then they will do investment so this was the point here now we summarize it uh, social development depends upon decision how much we are investing on each period uh, and and the part of investment is in innovation uh, but even sustained economic growth is possible only in the presence of technological change and an increased productivity as the intrinsically depends upon innovation which is an investment which also depends upon economic growth because we need to money to do investment the possibility of achieving sd pass relies on extent to which innovation systems are capable of reducing the impact of sustained economic growth so how good the innovations are it depends on the result so so the problem is that Uh, if we are not able to achieve the sustained growth we will not have money to invest so if we don't have money to invest we will not be able to do investment so the problem is we need to delink the environment impact from economic so it means we need to find a way that whenever we increase the gdp it does not increase co2 so it should not increase so that is called delinking and that we will discuss in 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 coming lectures so this will start from here okay this was the first session related to environmental cohesion curve